Hey everyone, Jacqueline here. Um, today I'm going to go through uh, my game, uh, my infected game that I've been creating over the last several milestones. Um, and I'm going to walk through everything that I have gotten completed for our last milestone, milestone 5. Um, so this is just a polish build and getting in um, uh, audio and controls, um, sound effects and um, uh, particle system and stuff like that. So I'm going to kind of walk through every thing that I have for you there. So the first thing that I'm going to walk you through is the options menu. Um, the options menu, you can control the controls, the video options, and the audio options. Um, so I'm going to walk you through how I got those to work. Um, so one of the first things I did was I created different managers um, just so I had a thing that handled everything um, for that specific thing. So uh, for the resolution, I have a window manager and what this says, it just manages all of the window settings. So the resolution, whether or not the game is windowed and um, the quality. So I'll open that up. I'll just take a second. Okay, so in here I have um, some, oh, it's thinking about it, hang on. All right, cool. So in my window manager, I have some global variables that I need in order to achieve everything in here. So um, most important ones are going to be our the drop down menus for the resolutions and quality names, um, our array that holds all of the resolutions and a Boolean that saves whether or not we want to do full screen. So if this is true, then we want to do full screen. If it's false, we don't want to do full screen. Um, so we have got uh, in start, I'm just setting resolutions and filling up that array because uh, without doing this, the array would be empty. Um, so we want to get all of those and stick them in there. Uh, then we're clearing our drop down menus and we are um, populating them with all of, well, so this one specifically, with all of the resolutions that are in the resolutions array. And then the second one is our quality one, so we're clearing that, and then we are um, setting the options equal to the names that are in my um, quality names list here that I just saved. So I put them in there manually, so we can call them what we would like. And then um, in my update function, I'm just getting the uh, the frames per second. So all I'm doing there is just dividing our frame count by time dot time and that just gives us our frame rate. And I'm casting it to an integer just so it chops off the decimal points because um, we don't really care about that and displaying it on the screen. Uh, and then so once you you know choose your option, so I'll go back here, um, on your video, excuse me, option. So once you choose your option here, it's going to um, trigger an event uh, on value changed, or no, that's not this one. Um, this will just kind of hold that. This is its value now. Um, and then this one also, like, that will just hold that. When you click save, it's calling a function uh, here. It's actually calling multiple functions. So the two that are most important for this aspect is the uh, apply quality and apply resolution. So this is what is changing our resolution so um so for resolution we're going through all of our resolutions in our array um, and then if the string value of that is equal to the text that's in our drop down so our, our, bad, our value that we're at text then we're going to set the resolution so screen dot set resolution to our width which i just want to be resolutions that we're currently on it's width um, and then the resolution height um, and then whether or not we want full screen, and that's going to be determined by the checkbox. So um, in the scene, let me turn this off because that is loud. And then finally, um, we have our toggle window, and this is that checkbox uh, here. Oops. I will turn the audio down. Options, audio. Cool. Um, so this checkbox here, when you change this value, it sets, um, it calls this function here, toggle window, and it sets whatever full screen is not. So whatever full screen is not equal to, it sets that. 
So if it's true, it's going to equal false. If it's false, it's going to equal true. And then if, um, so then it just sets screen dot full screen equal to full screen. So it'll window that as soon as you click it or undo it when you click it again. Okie dokie. We're still good here. Alrighty. And then, so that's all how that works. Um, and I'll show you how that works in build in just a few minutes. Um, we also have our audio, which is linked to our audio manager. In our audio manager, we have um, just several global variables, uh, three for our sliders, because they have three different sliders that we're using, and then one audio mixer, because um, I'm using an audio mixer to control the volume. So we need a reference to that as well. Um, in start, I'm checking to see if there are any player preferences for um, any of the volume keys. And if there is, we're going to set master volume, like the volume value to whatever that is. So um, that way it'll start at the last, at the value that you had last uh, left it on. Otherwise, if you don't have any of these keys, we're going to um, set the value equal to one. So we're just going to turn it all the way up and then save that to player prep. So to create the key. And then after we do all that, we're going to save the player preferences. Okay. So um, the main function in here that does a lot of, that does everything uh, does the stuff for changing the volume at runtime is the set volume function here. Uh, this gets called on value changed for the sliders. So here in our audio, we have the sliders. Um, they have an event on them by uh, default um, called on value changed. It's something that Unity has on there um, in the inspector. So if I go to my sliders, Options menu, audio menu, panel, master volume, slider. So here um, you'll see in our inspector, if I scroll down, we have this on value changed uh, event listener. Uh, so what it does is when this gets changed, it um, calls the event that you set here. So I have it linked up to set volume on my audio manager. And all it does is it gets it accesses the audio mixer, sets the float value of our um, so that's like the name of our current channel that we've uh, named that variable. And then we're um, just converting our uh, linear to decibel here. And I'm doing this in a different, uh, in a helper function. So up here, you'll see I have a private float called convert to decibel. Um, it takes in a, uh, a parameter of a float value. So I called this to convert. So this is what we're passing in here is our master volume value or just like the value of the slider. Um, so then I create a variable, a float variable in here, create a local one. And then, um, what I say is if the value that gets passed into this function, um, if that is equal to zero, then we're going to skip converting it and just set it straight to the negative 80, which is, um, in the decibels, the mute essentially. If it's set to this, you won't be able to hear the music at all. Um, but if it's greater than zero, um, or less than zero, which is impossible in our case, uh, just because of our sliders. But, um, if it is less than zero or greater than zero, um, we're going to set des this DB float. We're going to set the float up here equal to 20 times the math log uh, 10. Um, so math log 10, this is taking the base log of the number you pass into it. So, uh, for example, if we pass in a one, into this function, uh, the base log 10 of one is zero, zero times 20 is zero. So this is gonna be setting the decibels to zero, um, which for my case is full volume. Uh, I've had capped it at that just to make sure that it's not too high. Um, and then after I do this, so it's gonna return the value here and it'll do that. And then I just save all my player prefs immediately. So that way if like they quit the game or whatever, um, this will be saved in there for them. Okay, so that's how that works. It's super easy. Um, in Unity, you're able to create an audio mixer just by right-clicking in your project, create, um, and then go down until you find audio mixer. You click that. I have an audio mixer. I actually have several because I have filmed this video multiple times. Um, and every time it, something goes wrong with it, it looks like it's still going okay for now. Okay. Um, anyway, so audio mixers, you create that, you click into it, um, and it brings up the audio mixer tab down here. You'll, you'll see by default, there's only a master channel in here. Um, you'll want to add your music and sound effects one by going to groups, clicking this little plus sign, and then it'll create a new group. You can name it whatever you'd like. I'm going to delete that.
um, once you do that, uh, make sure all of these um, channels are under master and they're not like on top of each other or under each other because they're all equal of master. So they're just the equal children. Okay. And then um, once you have that, you're going to want to um, expose all of these to the scripts so we can change them. So you'll click on the channel you want to change. Go to the inspector under attenuation. It says volume. You right click. Um, and then here, you'll have exposed volume of master to script. Uh, once you've clicked that on all three of them, you'll want to come down here to this little drop down menu on the top right of the mixer, audio mixer panel, um, and then change the names of these. So uh, you can either right click on it and hit rename, or you can uh, double click on it uh, like that. And then. Um, or you can F2 change the name. So I think I called this master vol. I'll have to go back to the script and double check. But so I'll just set those. And whenever you name it here, you have to use the same names in the script. So you'll notice here I used master vol, music vol, sound effects vol. And on here we have master vol, music vol, sound effects. Yeah, okay, sound effects. Okay, that those are equal. Okie dokie. And then um I accidentally added a plus there. So that is how that works. Um, setting up the music, in, the audio source in the scene. Um, so what I did is I have audio sources on my player and my enemies. Um, on my enemy, I just put the audio source right on there. I dragged in the clip that it's going to play for shooting. And then... Uh, <laughs> So I set that all up. And then I the main important thing is I changed it to be its spatial blend to be in 3D. So that way you can only hear it when you're within a certain distance of it. Um, but once you drag that over to 3D, you want to go down to sound settings, change your vo volume roll off to linear because it's going to be default at logarithmic. Change it to linear. And then set your max and minimum distances here to be whatever you want. So let's see. So here's my enemy. I'll zoom out a little bit, and you'll be able to see this blue wireframe uh, uh, orb, I guess, uh, sphere. There we go. There's the word. Um, and this is just a visual of the uh, distance that he needs to be, that you need to be enabled to hear him shooting. Um, so one of the important things that you'll need to do in order to use your audio mixer with your audio sources is drag the output so you want to just go in your audio mixer and drag your audio mixer straight onto there um, or right like click on here and then choose the channel that you want to use okay and then one of the things that I had to do here that kind of tripped me up a little bit was make sure that we put our audio listener directly on the player because um, by default the uh, unity puts it onto the camera and that's where it is. But since in my case, since the camera is so high up, it's up here. See, it's like 10 or like something above. It's 15 above everything. So 15 is way higher than the five that this audio source goes up to. So I move the audio listener off of my camera and put it on my player. So that way when we walk over here by him, it will actually activate his sound and you'll be able to hear him shooting. Um, and that's how I got that to work correctly. Um, so that's that. The player's audio is all in 2D though, because the player is the player and we're always following the player. So we want to be able to hear all of their stuff all the time. So I have the background music has its own audio source in our scene. Um, I'm using the music channel on the audio mixer. I, dra I just dragged in the soundtrack that we're using. Uh, for the background music because that never changes and then um, I made sure that's playing on a wake and then for the player I have theirs I sound I put it into their sound effects channel um, the audio clip for the player isn't set by default um, just because as we shoot and um, do things like that we want to trigger different um, audio sounds so that's getting updated at runtime which I'll show you here so on my weapon script um, this handles all of the shooting, so um, what we do is once the trigger is pulled um, on the gun, uh, we check to see if you know it's the player, if we're the, sh the player shooting, or if it's an enemy shooting. If it's the player, and the weapon type is one, we're gonna set the rifle clip and then play it. 
Um, and then if it's uh, two, so if the weapon type is two, this is the pistol, then we're going to set the pistol clip and then we're going to play it. So that's how that is triggered um, there. And then I also have an audio clip for when the player lo uh, loses health and their health is set. Uh, it gets below, um, I think it's in the health script. Uh, yeah, so... I don't see it, so I'll have to open it. But um, so in the health script, we have a um, function called take damage, and that take damage is when it um, when the bullet hits it, it gets called. So um, what we do is here, if the health is less than fifty, uh, has left less than fifty points, then um, we're gonna you know set the animator to low health. So this triggers a um, animation on the screen that flashes like red so you know that you've been injured and that you're going to die soon then we're going to set the shooting clip uh, on the player to the low health clip and um, we're going to loop it so it just continuously plays um, and then we're going to play it and then if uh, health goes back up above 50 we're going to stop this clip we're going to set low health equal to false to stop the flashing and then we're going to stop the um, clip itself there so that's how those those two work. Those are my two triggered events um, for audio. Let's see, we're still doing good here? All right. Um, so that's that. I have uh, particles on my gun. So I'm going to show you those uh, prefabs. So here I have a particle on the pickup. So when you... Uh, so when it gets instantiated in the world, you see this yellow pickup particle. Um, basically how this one works, I have a couple of things going on here. Um, I think I have three particle systems, four on here. So the first one is kind of like this circle here. Um, these are traveling in a circle um, and kind of creating this, just the circle. Um, so this is like set crazy high um, because uh, for like the lifetime and start uh, duration and stuff because we just want it to continuously go. Um, and then it changes from white to yellow as it um, goes up. So you'll see the movement as it's falling up or using um, a rigid body uh, for this here. Um, and then I have the second part which is uh, see this it's like the light yellow to dark yellow so um, let's see if you can kind of see that it's kind of changing colors it's kind of lighter and then it goes darker up here um, this one okay so this one is kind of like these like little circle particle things in here you just see that we've got the particle in there oh that one's the circle particle Okay, so there we go. There's that. Um, but we also have a shooting um, particles on here. I'm going to go into this one to show you because it's a bit easier. Uh, okay, so you'll see when I play this, it shoots out for um, 0.25 seconds. And then uh, you also see that I have the um, bullets out on this side. Um, popping out. So all of this is is I have two particle systems for the um, for the the muzzle flash. So one is um, like this dark orange color. Um, you'll see it comes like at the front, and then the other one is like a white color that you see like at the back um, of the shot. So what they do is they travel in a cone, fun like a cone shape this way uh, for about 0.25 seconds and then they destroy themselves and the orange one travels slightly faster than the white one just to give that kind of uh, fire effect and then our third particle system is also using a cone as a shape um, and it uses some uh, uh, velocity over rotation, I think it's rotation over velocity, rotation by speed, um, so that as it moves, it rotates out of the, um, 
uh, so it looks like they're kind of be throwing out in different rotations so it looks more random um, and then all that is is we're using a renderer and we're, we've changed it to mesh and we're using a bullet brief uh, a bullet um, mesh with a uh, bullet material in there to make it look like a bullet so that's pretty much all how that works um, I think that's pretty much it um, for everything in here. Um, the main thing, yeah, I think is to show off the build and show you guys where you can access the build. So I um, will jump on to itch.io since that is where you can download the build. Um, I'm logged into myself, uh, so I can just go to my dashboard, but um, my username is uh, JS Hyman, um, and I'm going to go to my dashboard and open this up, and so the URL is jshyman.itch.io slash infected, and I'm going to be um, posting that in my description here. Uh, you can see that I already did a Milestone 5 video. It did get cut off about halfway through, so I didn't realize that when I posted it. Um, I was posting it as I was watching it, and then so I'm redoing it now. Um, and then you, you can hit download here. Um, and so you can pay um, money if you want. Absolutely not necessary if you you know don't want to or you just want to check it out. But um, so if you don't want to do it, just hit no. Thanks. Take me to downloads. Otherwise, if you do like to donate um, to the game and to me, uh, you could change this value, um, whatever you want, and then hit PayPal here. So just I'm gonna say no thanks for now. Hit download. It's gonna download a zip file for you. Um, at the time that I uploaded this, the resolution stuff was a bit wonky, so it has some instructions on how to fix the resolution, um, just because, uh, for me it was a little weird. I accidentally messed it up when I, um, opened it because I changed the resolution to really, really low, and then, um, at the time, I, uh, the UI wasn't scaling properly, so I had to, um, had to really struggle to get it back to the right size. So I just like, hey, when you open this, do this immediately. That way it gets set in your player prefs so you don't have to worry about it again, unless you change it. <laughs> but now the UI is fine. Um, it's scaling properly. So if you do change it to a really low resolution and it like windows it and makes it really, really tiny, um, you can still see what you're doing and still get it back to the correct um, resolution. This is taking forever. Okay, here we go. So you click on the zip. Um, you're going to want to extract everything. And hopefully this doesn't take too long. Shouldn't it? It's a super tiny file. Well, fairly small. It's 99 megabytes. Um, almost there. Five, four. There we go. Okay, so then once you uh, get that open, just click on there, and then click Top Down Shooter, um, and that will open the build. Uh, it's not a virus. You can run it anyway. Um, right. So here is the game. Um, I think my audio is off. Yeah, so I had already opened this before, so I have player prefs saved. Um, so my audio was down. But when you start the game, your audio will be all the way up. going to scroll down here. Click on... Oh, it did it. Weird. Okay. So, here we go.
pause menu. Um, we have a couple different options. We have a resume. That takes you back to the game. We have the options menu. Um, so we have our controls, which you can change to, you know, whatever you want. Uh, and then set them back because I don't want to be all messed up here. Um, so we've got that. We have our video, which I showed you at the beginning. Um, and then we have our audio. So I could set that down. Um, and then we can return to the main menu um, where you can see your uh, options. Uh, if I continue the game, uh, I lost my... Um, so if you survive the rounds, it will keep track of the score. So I'll show you. Honestly, for the build, I should have just made them all up. One hit point. I'm gonna turn that down. And I thought so much better. Um.